Hello, I'm Graham Fitch and welcome to my video demonstration on how to manage stretches from Steinway Hall in London. And this demonstration complements my article in Pianist Magazine, issue number 88. So let's look at, first of all at stretches within the hand uh, when we have to play, let's say, a chord that might be a little too much for us or we feel when we get to that chord, oh no, not that chord again, it always seems to stretch me. I'll just take, let me just find a chord, let me just take, no, let me, let's me. let make it a diminished seventh chord. Now what I'm going to do is, as I hold it down, I'm going to be as free as possible in the wrist and in the arm. So I can practice, first of all, just holding onto the chord, moving up and down a little bit, moving from side to side, and maybe even make some circles this way and that way, if I'm able to. In other words, just to be as free as possible in the arm and the wrist, and yet as contacted as I can be with the fingertips. So the exercise is this, with each finger in turn, I move chromatically down. Do you notice with the thumb, I'm even touching the, the note that the second finger is holding. Now I've got a big hand, I can go a little further. I can't quite go to the B cleanly, but I am able to go in the crack, and that's fine because it gives me a stretch and then I walk back down, do my, my little wobble again to make sure that I'm loose, and then do the same thing with my second finger. Come home to roost on the note that you're supposed to be holding. Now with the third finger, I can't quite get to the F, but I can get into the crack between the F and the E. Relax again, or release again. Now the same with the fourth finger. Now, I can't go beyond the C sharp. I don't feel like I want to go beyond. You, this is really important with stretches. Don't go beyond what is comfortable for you. This is the one gripe I have with some of Alfred Corto's exercises in his otherwise wonderful uh, student edition. Sometimes they ask you to do stretches that are a little bit, frankly, dangerous. I wouldn't do it. wouldn't go further than you can comfortably go. So that was my fourth finger. Now the pinky. If you can go chromatically one note and maybe a couple of times around. And now release the hand and then go back to the position. And you'll feel a kind of magic happen there that the chord just fits like a glove that's been made for you, a bespoke glove. Now there's another thing you can do for that and that's to lift up Combinations of fingers. Let me start off with one and three. Lift up. Now I'm going to lift up two and four. My inclination is to lift the fingers up fairly straight and bring them down. I don't want to lift them up like that because that claw position is tension producing. Let me lift up the middle three. Let me lift up the outside of the chord. You can use that on any chord that you find stretchy or indeed any chord that you just want that little bit more security. Let me move on to the idea of the closed hand. Now, I'll just find an example here from Schumann. Now that's quite a big chord stream um, and it's imperative there to be as free as possible in the gap between each chord release. Now what I do, what I suggest is closing the hand up and then finding the position again just at the last second. Do you see what's happening there? Play, bring the hands together, fingers together, or you can make a fist if you like, loose fist. So you lose, you lose the tension, you lose the hand position deliberately and you bring your hands out ready for the new chord just at the last minute. Needless to say, the fingertips are very busy here, pulling. And you'll find that in any stream of chords, or it could be octaves, if you practice like that, Lose the position, close the hand. Next note, lose the position, close the hand. After a while, you've built into your reflex arc there 
a moment of release. Now, when I play that, I'm not actually aware of the releases, but I've built them in. They are present and they stop me from getting tight and they keep me loose. Now, let's go on to a slightly simpler example to demonstrate anyway, and that's the... Let me just play it first. It's from the Haydn Sonata in F. Have a look at my left hand. Uh, let's see where I'm at. Now we often get patterns of notes that do this. Actually, I don't know that you can see very well. Let me make that happen in my right hand. I'm just going to do an inversion of it in my right hand, just so you can see what's going on. Watch my fifth finger. Now, if you're intuitive, you'd say, oh, well, I need to use my fifth finger again quite soon. So what I'll do is just keep my hand open and do that. Now, it's very counterintuitive what we need to do, and that's to lose the position, lose the pinky. Because it's, this idea is that the freer we are, the more mobile we are. And that's the key here. If I kept my hand outstretched, I'm already tight. And as soon as I tighten, I become paralyzed. Let me just end with that. And in the second part of this demonstration, I'm going to talk further about the closed hand and also show you how you can use that in examples from the repertoire in, in a couple of Chopin etudes that appear to be all about stretches, whereas in fact they're to do with the opposite. So I'll see you again in a moment.